All right, chap. Oh, I would say great performance. You're on point, but I think 3027, 3027, 2928 says, says it all, right? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. What were you most proud of tonight? Uh, defending the takedowns, attacking, defending guillotines, rear naked chokes, your hands. What was it that you were like, okay, I'm going to watch this like a thousand times? Um, you know, I'm just, I guess I'm just proud of the fight, just the performance, just getting through that struggle. You know, Dan's a tough dude. You know, he's a pain in the butt to fight. He just was coming forward, coming forward. Um, I was really, I felt really, really confident in my corner. You know, uh, my coach, Trey, he was leading me through in some positions that were getting a little bit, a little bit shaky in there that I wasn't quite sure. I could hear his voice telling me exactly what to do, and I did it, and I felt super confident. But, I mean... I don't know. It's just, it's just been a long road to get here, you know, and I felt like uh, with some of the ups and downs I've had in my in my career in the past, I felt like I needed a fight like that, like an action packed fight that took some grit, that took some heart, that I was just going to go and remind myself who I am. You know, the um, yeah, I just, I just reminded myself who I am and the type of heart that I have tonight. Yes, sir. Um, speaking of heart and then your conditioning, Dan's not a slouch. Like we know he's going to give you 110 percent. 15 hard minutes, but you weren't able to just match that. You were, you made him level up. How, what, what did you work on in this camp? Because your conditioning has never looked better. You know, we, I, I do work on conditioning a lot, but I was also, I just trained, you know, and, and I trained with a game plan. I felt like when, when things got a little tough, I was sticking to the game plan. And the longer that I stuck to the game plan that we had, the more it started working. You know, when he was getting a little bit tired, when he was starting to just have to go for broke and just come at me, I just stuck to my guns. I knew what I needed to do. I knew I needed an inside leg kick, use the jab, step to the left, eyes below eyes. And when I just stuck to that, it, it started working off and paying off more and more. So, um, yeah, I, I've told people before, like in high school wrestling and back in the day, like cardio was never an issue for me. I was that guy that if I I took you into overtime I was gonna beat you for sure like there was no question I was gonna get you in overtime and I knew that I had that in me so that's why I was saying like I just reminded myself of who I am tonight some people in the past have questioned my cardio but there's no question like I like I'll fight for 15 minutes 25 minutes whatever it is I'm in there until it's over for sure man it looks like if they had a fourth and fifth you were ready to go yeah that, what was the, you touched on it what was the the game plan going into tonight the game plan was just uh, one, stay eyes below eyes. So that means like stay a lower level than him. I knew that he was going to be shooting a lot of shots. So if I kept my knees bent and I stayed under him to where my hips were lower than his, I knew it was going to be hard for him to take those shots. I was supposed to stay off of the cage, which maybe I didn't do perfectly in the first round. But after that, I started, I started making the adjustments. And I was supposed to step outside that lead foot, use that inside leg kick, faint some uppercuts. Um, do, yeah, just... Just all the things that you saw me doing in there, it wasn't just like, and sometimes I felt like I've just, I just fight. Like I just go in there and fight. That wasn't just fighting. That was focused, tactical, skillful performance. You know, I was, I knew what I was looking for and I, and I started finding the home for those things. And, you know, I was very impressed with the, just how the technical prowess. You were able to pick off these shots, roll with the shot, counter him. I mean, you were always just one step ahead. Give yourself a, I'm sure, you know, fighters Fighters are always so hard on themselves, but critique you. One, two, a ten. How good did you think you did? Because, you know, again, 30-27, that, that means you dominated. I would, I would say I did like a, like a seven and a half or eight tonight. You know, I do, I do feel like I could have stayed a little bit tighter. I, could, I feel like I could have pulled the trigger and been first a couple more times, and I, I could have done a couple of things different. But, uh, but we're getting there, you know. We're still learning. Yeah, little by little. Um, how soon do we see you back? Are you good to 2020, like the end, or are we not till 2024? When do you return? Any names? I hate to ask you that, but you know we gotta not, off of this big win. Now you got some momentum. Yeah, you know, I, I want to get back as soon as possible. You know, I got to make sure I got to I gotta sleep tonight and make sure that my shoulder and everything is still good, you know, because I'm coming from that injury. But it feels good right now, and I, I'm, I'm excited to get back. I'm ready to string some wins together. You know, I want to I wanna get that momentum building. I want to keep it rolling. You know, um, I'm not one to call people out really either, but I know just like – just what makes sense to me is Eamon Sahibi is a name that I've been looking at. He's coming off of three wins, two big knockouts, and I know he's said he wanted to stay active. Everybody else in the division or that I've seen that I've had my eye on like has a fight, and he's the only one that doesn't. But but if not that, you know, Sean Shelby, um, he's, he does – a great job. It, it, he's great at his job, you know, and wh whatever he sends me, it always seems like the perfect test for me at the time. So I'll just go back to the drawing boards and wait to see what they say. But hopefully I'll get in there into this year, early, beginning of the next year. I can't wait for it. I mean, they did a great job tonight. That, fan, that fight with you and Dan was absolutely great. Yeah. And last for me, if you wanted to elaborate a little bit on, on these trials and tribulations, you kind of touched on it post-fight, but now that we have a little bit more time to talk, 
if you wanted to disclose anything or just what you were, you know, what you said you've been going through and overcoming this to get to tonight? Yeah, so I mean, in, in a nutshell, I moved, I changed gyms, moved my whole family to Kansas City. And um, the gym that I moved my uh, family to Kansas City for got shut down before, before my last fight. The night before that fight, my coach got pulled. We were at the team dinner. My coach got pulled from my corner. It was my first fight with him, and he's saying he can't corner me. So I just went in there with my brothers and my dad as my corners. You know, and then um, luckily I found a home here at, uh, in Kansas City at Marathon. But then after that, my first fight with Marathon, um, the Wednesday before that fight, I tore my, I dislocated my shoulder, tore my labrum, tore my pec, so I wasn't able to fight. I had to pull out days before, um, and a lot, co a lot goes into that. You know, I put a lot of money and a lot of time into this camp. I have four kids now, so to not even be able to get my show money, we like we're planning on. I, I never thought that I'd have to pull out of a fight two days before the fight. Like, by the time I get there, I know I'm at least going to get my show money. But not being able to get that and having to do that and then having to have a whole other camp where you're putting money to and putting time into, you know, it, it was just tough. So that, that's just it. That's it in a nutshell. Um, but my wife has been super supportive. You know, I've tried to stay uh, very optimistic about everything. I know that God has a plan, and I know that as long as I um, stay the course, it'll pay off. And tonight, um, thank God it paid off. Excellent. Congrats on the win and the performance. Thank you. I just have one question. I'm just curious, how do you stay positive during that time? Because it sounds like a lot to handle. You've got a family and kids, everything. How do you stay positive? Um, faith. You know, I, I use my faith. I rely on my faith. And the other thing is I chose this life. Like, yeah, I can, I can sit there and I complain, oh, this, oh, that. I, I could do that, but this is a life that I chose. You know, I'm doing this because I'm a fighter. Like, I've, I've always been a fighter. I'll always be a fighter. So if, I'm, if I chose this life, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle the trials and tribulations that come with it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and get down on myself and complain about it. This is what I do. And, um, and I, knew that, I knew that we'd bounce back. I knew that we were on the right course. I knew that the timing just wasn't right last time for whatever reason. But, um, but here we are tonight. Like, I, it's finally paid off. Thank you. Just one for me. You had a powerful message at the end as well. I believe you were directing it or in the memory of your, your wife's brother, but you also were reaching out to people that, you know, possibly need help. How important is it to use this platform to do that sort of thing? And is that something that weighed on your mind during this fight camp? It didn't weigh on my mind during this fight camp. Um, I was very grateful to have the platform to be able to do that because it is, I mean, it's just a tragedy of life that is really, it's, it's just hard to accept and it, it, it's just... It, it sucks. You know, I know that people struggle with just, just wanting to be here, you know, and, I, and I've had a friend in high school, I have his initials tattooed on my arm also, that, um, that also passed away from mental illness. Um, and he was somebody that I looked up to on the wrestling team. He was a team captain. So I've, I've dealt with it a lot in, in my life. So I was just happy to be able to use that platform. But as far as like with this fight camp, when I first got the news, um, September 23rd, I was really nervous. I didn't know if my shoulder was going to be able to handle it. You know, I could barely do a push-up at that time, you know, but um, my wife told me, you know, you know, that's Hunter's birthday, right? And immediately after that, I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's take, like, that's, that's the date. Let's take the fight. I took, I took it as a sign of that. And my shoulder did handle it. Um, we, we were able to make it here and be able to capitalize on the night and everything. So, so yeah, once it was just, it was a part of this camp. I don't let it weigh on my mind too much, but I knew that once I get this win, um, and I was not going to surrender, I was going to fight for that win. And once I got that win, that I was going to, um, going to give him a, a little bit of honor that he deserves and also just try to help anybody that I possibly could in any way. That's awesome. Thank you for doing that. That was very nice, by the way. Is that it? All right. Thank you, guys.